dear students, the first topic of the first lecture is introduction, and also today we will talk about cytology. Uh, so, at our department of histology, cytology, and embryology, uh, you will study uh, uh, three subjects, three chapters with histology, cytology, and embryology. So, what do they study? They study at our department cytology, embryology, and histology will begin from cytology, then we will study embryology, and then we will study histology. So, what is cytology? Cytology is the science that studies the structure and functions of cells. So, we can see cells, they may be very different, and they are studied by cytology. Embryology, second chapter, second subject, uh, it's the science that studies the development of the organism from conception, from fertilization to birth. And also we will study embryology, we will study general embryology, which studies uh, the development of entire organism. And also we will study special embryology, which studies development of different organs and tissues. Uh, here we can see three principal stages uh, which show uh, different stages of development of human embryo beginning from uh, unicellular organism they got uh, to the uh, completely formed new organism uh, child before birth and here you can see stages of development and as uh, this we will study during general embryology and also we will have some uh, questions in special embryology which studies development of, of different organs and systems uh, and we will study it uh, during uh, following classes and we will study structure of different organs we also will study structure uh, and development of those organs and systems it's uh, studied by special embryology and uh, the main and the biggest chapter, uh, the biggest academic discipline which is studied at our department, it's histology. So, histology is the science that studies the structure of tissues and organs at the microscopic level. Here we can see uh, sections of two organs uh, and uh, here we can see their appearance under the microscope. To study those organs and tissues, we should make very thin sections uh, from the organs to make them transparent. Uh, then we apply staining, we give them some color uh, to reveal different structures and then we study them using microscope and uh, it uh, provides uh, magnification of different organs and uh, tissues and under uh, big magnification we can see different um, and wonderful structures and uh, it's very interesting and also it's very important for you as uh, for future doctors uh, so here we can see distinct cells which are uh, making up the tissues and tissues together they form different organs and here you can see two examples of two uh, different organs and here you can see how different they are and during um, this year you will study uh, microscopic structure of different organs uh, and uh, also how those structure is related with different um, functions. Uh, and uh, to make a conclusion, we can say that histology, cytology and embryology are disciplines which study structure, functions and development of uh, cells, tissues and organs. And we study cells, tissues, and organs using microscope. Uh, also, you study anatomy. Anatomy studies organs and particular tissues uh, without microscope. Uh, this discipline studies uh, them at microscopic level. Uh, and you study different parts of the organs, uh, uh, different structures which are included in those organs. And at our department, we'll study the same organs but at the microscopic level, what is interesting when we will magnificate those organs and uh, what cells and tissues are included in those organs. So uh, histology and anatomy, they are very related disciplines. They study the same organs, but on the different levels. Anatomy studies microscopic organization, 
of the organs and histology it studies microscopic organization of different organs and also tissues and cells. There are different levels of organization of the human body as a biological systems, system. Here we can see different levels of organization. Here we can see cells. Cells, they uh, form tissues. Tissues, they form organs. Organs form systems of organs. And systems of organs, they form entire organism. So there are different levels of organization of the human body as a biological system. And you study them all. Uh, there are anatomical levels of organization of the human body. There are systems of organs and organs uh, which you study at anatomy department. And at histology department you also will study tissues and cells which form organs and organs they form systems of organs. Uh, so uh, it's uh, histological levels of organization, uh, cell, tissues and cell and tissues they form organs and systems of organs. And histology uh, is divided into two chapters. It's general histology, which studies tissues, and special histology, which studies microscopic structure of organs and systems of organs. And uh, first of all, we will begin from cytology, which studies cells. Then we will continue to study cells as uh, elements of tissues. So we will study general histology. And then we'll study special histology, we'll study microscopic structure of organs and systems of organs, and we'll study how uh, different tissues and cells are organized into organs. So what do organs consist of? We are going from anatomy to microanatomy. And here we can see diagram which shows structure of some organ of our body. For example, it's organ of the digestive system. And here we can see different layers, different structures, uh, different cells. And uh, organs, for example, uh, hollow organs, tubular organs, for example, intestine. They have separate layers, separate plates of full. And they are composed of different tissues. We can see that in different places, uh, this organ has different structure. And we can compare different cells and they are forming different patterns. And uh, we can conclude that organs are composed of different tissues. So organs and tissues, different levels of tissues, they form organs. And uh, here we can see um, drawings of histological slides of uh, uh, organ of digestive system in stomach and we can reveal different tissues uh, and how they are organized in this organ. Uh, so, uh, what is the tissue? Tissue is a biological system which consists of specialized cells. Here we can see cells and they are derivatives. Um, which form those uh, tissues uh, and uh, it has special location representation in the body and it's intended to perform special very specific functions so here we can see the tissues they are present in different parts of this organ and they are they perform different functions and those functions they correspond to their structure and tissues they are formed by cells and cell derivatives. Here we can see cells and also they uh, form different derivatives, for example, intercellular matrix, which fills the spaces between the cells, and also there are uh, another cell derivatives, and together they form tissues. Uh, but main uh, component of tissue is the cell, uh, and uh, cells, they form uh, everything what is present in the tissues. Uh, and we have uh, four principal types of tissues. Probably you remember, probably you have studied them at secondary school. Uh, there are epithelial tissues, connective tissues, muscular, and nerves. Four principal groups of tissues. And they form all organs in our body. Uh, so, there are epithelial tissues which cover the surfaces and lines and the cavities inside our body, for example, it's superficial epithelium, and we can see a uh, columnar shape of the cells, epithelial cells. Here we can see uh, capillaries, 
uh, blood vessels which also have epithelial lining, but cells here are a little bit different. So we can say that different tissues, even one type of tissue, epithelial tissue, it may have a very different appearance. Also, we have muscular tissue. Here we can see muscular cells or myocytes, and say four muscular tissues. Also, we have nervous tissue, it's uh, formed by nervous cells or neurons, and they also have very specific shape and very different shape, uh, which uh, provides their specific functions. Uh, and connective tissue, the most common type of tissues, but uh, this type of tissue has very big amount of types and classifications. And connective tissues, they connect neighboring tissues, specialized tissues, and also they fill the spaces between another cells, between another structures, uh, and uh, also they form soft and hard skeleton of our body, they uh, provide support for uh, all other tissues. Uh, so we have four principal types of tissues, epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous, and they form all organs of our body. And we can see that all tissues say contain cells. These uh, cells are different, uh, but everything in the tissues uh, is or the cells or it's formed by the cells. For example, intercellular matrix it's produced by the cells. Uh, and um, uh, we can conclude that the cell is the basis of the structure of multicellular organism. So, multicellular organism, the basic and the uh, smallest uh, level, the self governing level of the, um, our organism, is the cell. So, cell is the basis of the structure of a multicellular organism. And here we can see a diagram which shows the basic structure of the cell. And uh, this structure is started. Uh, by cytology, and we begin to study our subject from the cell, from cytology. The shape of the cell uh, is different, and it corresponds to the functions of the cell. Here we can see different cells with different shape, and they provide different functions. And also they have different size, and they are present in different uh, parts of our body, and uh, they are organized in the tissues in different ways. Uh, and here we can see cuboidal cells of epithelial tissue. Here we can see columnar cells uh, of epithelial tissue. Uh, also, epithelial tissue and uh, cells are polygonal or multiform. Uh, here we can see spindle-like cells of muscular tissue. Uh, Star-like or branched cells, neurons of nose uh, tissue. Uh, so all cells, they have different shapes but they have a common plan of structure. They have common features, uh, common um, uh, features of their morphology, of their structure. And today we'll talk about common features of all cells, what is common for all cells of our body. So let's begin from the cell. We are going to cytology, and it's cytology is a science which studies cells. So what is the cell? The cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of the human organism. It's self-governing, self-regulating and self-regenerating biological system, which possesses all features of the whole organism, such as metabolism, growth, irritability, movement, etc. So the cell is the elementary level of the organization of all multicellular organisms. And let's uh, look at the structure of the cells and what is common, what is characteristic for all cells of our body. So here we can see different cells and there are three basic parts of the cell. Each cell has envelope or membrane, plasma membrane. It's called cell membrane or plasmolemma or uh, plasma membrane. It separates inner and outer environments of the cells, so it's, it forms the cell. Uh, also, we have cytoplasm, here we can see cytoplasm, and third compartment of the cell, it's nucleus. So, three compartments of the cell, cell membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleus. 
Nucleus uh, is governing compartment of the cell, and it's very common mistake of students that they uh, call nucleus uh, as a double membranous uh, organelle. Uh, nucleus uh, is considered by histologists and cytologists uh, as a distinct uh, governing compartment of the cell. Uh, so we uh, described nucleus as a, a one of three main compartments of the cell. There are cell brain, cytoplasm, and nucleus. We begin from cell membrane, which separates inner and outer environments of the cells. It's called plasma lemma or plasma membrane or cytolemma. So what uh, do we know about cell membrane? Cell membrane has fluid mosaic model of the organization. Uh, it's typical biological membrane, which is composed of uh, uh, phospholipids, special uh, molecules which have polar hydrophilic heads, which uh, communicate with water, and uh, non-polar tails, hydrophobic tails. They are enclosed inside the phospholipid bilayer. Here we can see phospholipid bilayer, and there are polar heads, they form surfaces of the membrane and tails they are enclosed in the plasma membrane. And there are cholesterol uh, molecules. Here we can see they are present between the tails uh, and uh, they decrease fluidity of the cell membrane. Those phospholipids, they have ability for fluidity, they are movable. And uh, cholesterol molecules, which are located between them, uh, they decrease this fluidity. Also, we have uh, proteins which are uh, located inside the cell membrane, plasma membrane. Uh, we have integral proteins which uh, pass through all thickness of the cell membrane, and also there are peripheral proteins which are located on one of the sides of the cell membrane. And it's typical model of the uh, biological membrane, which is present in cell membrane, also it's present in uh, the membranous organelles and nuclear membrane, nuclear envelope. But uh, uh, cell membrane, plasma membrane, which separates inner and outer environments, it has additional structures. First of all, on the outer surface, uh, it has inclusions of carbohydrates, and stay together with proteins, they form glycocarlids. Glycocarlyx participates uh, in the cell recognition. It forms special patterns which are uh, recognized by immune system or by some other cells. And it's uh, like immune passport of the cells. It's glycocarlyx which participates in cell recognition and also uh, it provides some other important uh, functions such as participation in cell metabolism, participation in the digestion because some enzymes uh, are um, included in the glycocarlyx. So glycocarlyx is a special uh, complex of carbohydrates which are attached to the proteins on the outer surface of cell membrane. And on the inner surface of cell membrane, it helps a membranous complex. There are uh, linker proteins, which are attached to the membranous proteins. And we have special thread like proteins. They are called spectrins. They are attached to the linker proteins. And they form the submembranous complex under uh, the plasma membrane. Uh, those uh, thread like proteins, spectrins, they maintain the shape of the cell membrane and uh, they form a membranous complex um, which is needed for the function of the cell. So it's typical structure of, uh, of cell membrane, of plasma membrane. In other membranes of our cells which are involved in the formation of membranous organelles and nuclear envelope, they have this appearance. They have anticlycocalyx and submembranous complex of spectrins. They have only this structure. And in plasma membrane, which forms uh, the wall of cell, we also have glycocalyx and submembranous complex, which is composed of spectrins. Cell membrane provides different important functions, such as membrane transport, 
uh, and uh, also is involved uh, in the uh, endo and exocytosis. We have uh, three types, it's phagocytosis or cell eating, uh, pinocytosis or cell drinking and receptor mediated endocytosis. They are described as a kinds of uh, membranous transport. And also we have exocytosis, the process opposite for endocytosis. And membranous transport or membrane transport um, is provided by different proteins inside the cell membrane uh, or diffusion and osmosis. It uh, hasn't any mediators or supportive uh, uh, molecules. Uh, and also we have facilitated diffusion which uh, requires uh, different membranous uh, protein canals. It's passive transport. And also we have active transport. Um, it requires ATP energy uh, and there are different uh, carrier and pump proteins uh, which uh, provide active transport. And also you know that there are uh, endo and exocytosis which are described by some scientists as a kind of membranous transport. And cell membrane or plasma membrane is involved in the cell junctions. And there are different kinds of cell junctions. We have tight junctions, adherent junctions, desmosomes, uh, gap junctions, uh, also simple junctions, and also there are hemidesmosomes which attach cells to the uh, plasma, to the basement membrane. There are different kinds of cell junctions and we will study them in topic uh, epithelial tissue. Uh, and now we are going to the next uh, compartment of the cell uh, and it's the nucleus, it's the governing compartment of the cell. And nucleus is present in all eukaryotic cells and we are eukaryotes, so all our cells uh, are uh, having nucleus. So what are the basic parts of the cell? Nucleus of the nucleus. Nucleus includes nuclear envelope, it includes nucleoplasm, chromatin, and nucleolus. Uh, and let's begin from nuclear envelope, uh, the outermost membrane which separates inner and outer spaces of the nucleus. Nuclear envelope it contains uh, two membranes which have typical structure uh, of uh, biological brain and uh, between them we have perinuclear space and there are numerous nuclear pores there are special complexes uh, between complexes which form uh, pore complexes which close nuclear pores and they provide transport and communication between inner and outer environments between nucleoplasm a fluid substance which fills the space inside the nucleus and cytoplasm and it's provided by nuclear pores. And uh, nuclear uh, pores, they have special diaphragms and they regulate this transport. And um, number of nuclear pores depends on uh, activity, metabolic activity of the cell. When the cell is very active, number of nuclear pores increases. When the cell isn't very active, uh, or when cell is in the resting condition, number of nuclear pores decreases uh, or they may disappear before the cell death. Uh, so, number of nuclear pores shows us the metabolic activity of the cell. And here we can see nuclear pore. Uh, it's a double membranous nuclear envelope. It's very nuclear space. And inside the nucleus, we have special submembranous complex, which is a like complex of spectrins. Uh, there are laminins or nuclear uh, lamina, which uh, maintains the shape of nuclear envelope. Uh, and inside the nucleus, we have nucleoplasm or cardioplasm, special jelly like fluid, which contains chromatin. Chromatin is main part. Um, the main structure inside the nucleus. Uh, chromatin uh, is a complex of DNA and proteins, histones and non-histone proteins. Here you can see uh, DNA chain and there are histones and also there are non-histone proteins. And it's the storage of genetic material in our cell. And there are two conditions of chromatin. There are euchromatin and heterochromatin. Euchromatin is active and uh, heterochromatin is inactive. 
eucromatin is active and it's unpacked it uh, in the loose condition and uh, it's active that's why uh, it's not uh, in the condensed uh, condition and on the histological slides uh, we can distinguish uh, regions in the nucleus uh, which uh, correspond to eucromatin they are lightly stained and uh, heterochromatin regions in the nucleus, they are darkly stained. Uh, they are dark because heterochromatin is dense, it's inactive. That's why it's uh, in the condensed condition. And we can um, find those regions of heterochromatin as dark granules inside uh, the cell nucleus. And there are two kinds of heterochromatin. It's facultative and constitutive heterochromatin. Constitutive heterochromatin always is heterochromatin, and uh, facultative heterochromatin may uh, become euchromatin uh, as a result of activation and may become again heterochromatin. So um, there are two kinds of chromatin, euchromatin and heterochromatin. And uh, also uh, there are two terms which are related, chromatin and chromosomes. So what is the difference between them? Each cell of our body has uh, 46 chromosomes, except uh, spermatozoa and ova. Uh, so 46 chromosomes and each chromosome is made up of single molecule of DNA. And those molecules in the condensed condition are visible during cell division, during mitosis or meiosis. But in the resting condition during interface between cell divisions, they aren't visible, they are unpacked, uncondensed, and uh, we call them chromatin. So inside the nucleus, we have 46 molecules of DNA. Uh, during interface between the divisions, they are visible uh, as chromatin. During interface, they are condensed and uh, different uh, chromosomes may be uh, visible, may be recognized. So chromatin and chromosomes, they are almost synonymous uh, terms, uh, but uh, chromosomes are visible, um, are molecules of DNA which are visible uh, during the cell divisions. And they exist in the nucleus between the divisions, uh, but they aren't visible in the nucleus. Uh, and there are different levels of chromatin organization. It's DNA chain. Uh, then we have nucleosomic level. Uh, there are nucleosomes which are surrounded with this um, DNA chain. Next, it's solenoid level. Next, it's loop level. Next, it's domain level. And domain they form uh, chromosomic level, it's the highest level of chromatin organization. And also, nucleus has very dense part, uh, it's called nucleolus. Here we can see nucleolus, uh, it's the densest part of the nucleus. Uh, nucleolus uh, uh, is formed by uh, the satellites part of the chromosomes. Some chromosomes they have satellites uh, on their uh, chromatids at the ends of their chromatids, and those satellites they form nucleolus. The main function of the uh, nucleolus is formation of subunits of ribosomes. There are cell organelles, ribosomes, which uh, form, which produce proteins, and uh, subunits of ribosomes are formed in the nucleolus. And we have discussed cell membrane and nucleus, and uh, now we are going to the biggest part of the uh, cell, it's cytoplasm. But it provides very important functions of the cells, and it provides essential, essential functions of the cell. So let's go to the structure of cytoplasm. Cytoplasm includes hyaloplasm, or cytosol, uh, it's fluid inside the cell, uh, and it's jelly-like fluid or substance inside the cell. Uh, and also we have uh, obligatory cellular organelles inside the cytoplasm, uh, and sometimes uh, we call them erhastoplasm, uh, it's old term. And also there are non-permanent structures which are called inclusions. Some cells, they have inclusions, but they aren't obligatory in the cytoplasm. Uh, 
so the main uh, structures uh, of cytoplasm are hyaloplasm, uh, cellular organelles, and inclusions. Uh, and uh, let's go to the organelles. So the organelles, or uh, they also are called little organs, are the specialized uh, subunits inside the cell uh, which provide specific functions. And it uh, differs organelles from the cell inclusions. Inclusions, they are non-permanent structures and uh, they are non-living um, parts of the cell. What does it mean? Uh, for example, some cells, they contain inclusions uh, of fat, drops of fat. Some cells, uh, they contain uh, inclusions uh, of uh, carbohydrates. Some cells, they um, have pigment inclusions uh, and uh, they are non active. And uh, they may be present in the cell or they may disappear in the cell. Uh, they are inclusions. Uh, and organelles, they provide very specific functions and they are essential for the cell. So they cannot disappear inside the cell. Uh, and uh, there are different organelles and let's list them. Uh, so we have endoplasmic reticulum, there are two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to it. And smooth endoplasmic reticulum has antiprobosomes. Also, we have different transport vesicles and tubules inside, and uh, some of them are involved in the endoplasmic reticulum. Also, we have Golgi apparatus or Golgi complex. Uh, also, we have lysosomes and peroxisomes, uh, single membranous organelles, vesicles which are present in the cell. We have mitochondria. Uh, which provide a synthesis of ATP. We have cell center uh, and also we have cytoskeleton, uh, which maintains the shape of the cell. Um, and uh, all those organelles may be classified into two groups. Some organelles, they contain uh, membranes and they are called membranous organelles. And some organelles, they don't contain membranes and they are called non-membranous organelles. Uh, so, um, we have two kinds of uh, uh, cell organelles, membranous and non-membranous. Membranous organelles may contain one or two membranes. They may be single membranous or double membranous organelles. So, we have three groups of organelles, single membranous, double membranous, and non-membranous cell organelles. And uh, single membranous organelles, they include endoplasmic reticulum, uh, loose, uh, smooth and rough, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and peroxisomes. And double membranous organelles are mitochondria. And also, probably you know, such organelles as plastids. Plastids uh, also are double membranous organelles, but they are present in plants. We are animals in biological classification, and our cells, they don't have pl uh, plastids because we aren't plants. So we have only mitochondria. And also, nucleus isn't double membranous organelle, it's distinct governing compartment of the cell. It's not double membranous organelle in histological and cytological classifications. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, non-membranous organelles. There are ribosomes, proteasomes, cytoskeleton, and cell center. Uh, and all those organelles are present in all cells. Each cell has membranous, non-membranous organelles. So all those organelles, they are present in all cells our body and they are called general organelles. They are essential for all cells of our body. And also some specialized cells have special organelles. They aren't characteristic for all cells. They are present only in some specific kinds of the cells. And they are cilia and flagella, microvilli, myofilaments, neurofilaments and tonofilaments and some other special organelles 
and they are present only in some special types of the cells. For example, myofilaments are present in myocytes in muscular cells, neurofilaments are present in nervous cells, and they help them to provide their specific functions. And we will study special organelles uh, in the following uh, topics. When we will study special cells uh, and special cells of different tissues and organs, and we will talk about their special organelles, uh, which differs, uh, differs them from others. And today uh, we will talk about general organelles, which are present in all cells of our body. And uh, we'll begin from simple membranous organelles, and first one is endoplasmic reticulum. There are two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum, it's smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, what is common for them? Uh, endoplasmic reticulum is a single membranous organelle, which is form, uh, formed by uh, different canals, tubules, networks, uh, vesicles, so, a uh, single membrane, uh, it forms labyrinth inside the cell, membranous labyrinth, which has inner space, and a uh, single membrane separates it from uh, cytosol. And also, there are different vesicles, which provide transport between different compartments of endoplasmic reticulum. So, different tubules, uh, different uh, vesicles are involved in the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes, which are attached to the membrane of rough endoplasmic reticulum on outer surface, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it has these uh, ribosomes. Uh, so, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, here we can see its shape, network or a labyrinth, a single membranous labyrinth, which has inner space, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which provides synthesis of carbohydrates and lipids. Uh, organic molecules and also it participates in the, the detoxification and also uh, in some cells, for example, in muscular cells, it's storage of calcium ions. It's smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And here we can see appearance of smooth endoplasmic reticulum under the microscope. Different vesicles, uh, different labyrinth like structures which are formed by single membranous um, layer, single membranous wall, and also there is inner space. Rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to it, and ribosomes they provide protein synthesis, and rough endoplasmic reticulum together with ribosomes they provide this protein synthesis. And here we can see that uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum is continued into the membrane of the nuclear envelope. And here we can see how the nuclear envelope is involved uh, in the formation of rough endoplasmic reticulum and it's continued into the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And uh, usually ribosomes may be attached in even to the membranes of uh, the nuclear envelope. And here we can see rough endoplasmic reticulum and nucleus it provides a synthesis of um, uh, RNA, matrix RNA uh, as a transcription and matrix RNA uh, goes from nucleus via nuclear pores and goes to ribosomes where translation takes place um, and uh, protein synthesis takes place here on the ribosomes of rough endoplasmic reticulum. And after the synthesis, uh, protein chains are going to the uh, cavity of membranes of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here we can see uh, membranes of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here we can see inner space and ribosomes. They are attached to the outer membrane of our rough endoplasmic reticulum and protein chains are entering in the space of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here we can see a uh, space of rough endoplasmic reticulum its membrane, and there are those granules, dark uh, uh, gray or uh, black granules, are ribosomes, numerous ribosomes, which are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
And let's go to the structure of ribosomes. Ribosomes are non-membranous organelles, but they are involved in the protein synthesis together with rough endoplasmic reticulum. And here we can see the structure of ribosomes. Each ribosome has two subunits, a small subunit and big subunit or large subunit. And in the resting condition, they are in the separate localization. And during uh, protein synthesis, the, uh, both uh, subunits are attached to the mRNA, matrix RNA, and protein synthesis begins. And here we can see that uh, in some cases, some ribosomes are attached to the same molecule of mRNA, and they uh, are producing the same proteins. Um, and here we can see, and uh, this chain of the following ribosomes, which follow each other, is called polyribosome or polysome. It's complex of ribosomes which are attached to the same molecule of mRNA. Uh, so uh, there are different localizations of ribosomes and they have some specific features of their functions. We have ribosomes which are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Also, we have free ribosomes which are located in cytosol, and also we have mitochondrial ribosomes. Uh, ribosomes which are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum they provide mainly heterosynthesis, and free ribosomes they provide autosynthesis. What is hetero and autosynthesis, and what is the difference between them? Heterosynthesis is synthesis for the export when the cell is producing something, and it releases it to outer environment. So there are secretory cells which are specialized in the production of different substances, and uh, they uh, produce those substances and release them. It's called heterosynthesis. And also uh, we have autosynthesis, it synthesis of different substances for own cell needs. So ribosomes which are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they provide heterosynthesis for the export for other cells, for example, components of uh, intercellular matrix. And uh, free ribosomes, they mainly provide autosynthesis, synthesis of proteins for own cell needs, uh, which, um, for example, proteins which build up uh, different structures inside the cell. And also there are mitochondrial ribosomes, um, which uh, provide synthesis of uh, proteins for needs of mitochondria. Uh, you know that mitochondria, they are independent uh, organelles, self-governing organelles, and they can provide uh, synthesis on, of own proteins. Own protein synthesis is possible in mitochondria. Uh, and uh, here we can see ribosomes which are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the membranes. Uh, and here we can see ribosomes which are located on the uh, cell membranes. It's scanning electron microscopy. And here we can see polyribosomes. It's the same mRNA, numerous ribosomes which are following each other, and newly produced protein chains. Here we can see uh, protein chains which are composed of amino acids. And here we can see how um, huge is magnification of the scanning electron microscope and how wonderful are those molecules and how this is provided during the protein synthesis. It's called polyribosome. It's called translation. And here we can see mitochondria and uh, uh, here we can see free ribosomes which surround mitochondria and also mitochondria they uh, have own ribosomes which provide synthesis of mitochondrial proteins for the needs of mitochondria. Uh, so uh, we have two parts of endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth uh, produces uh, carbohydrates and lipids. Rough endoplasmic reticulum produces proteins. Three groups of organic substances. Proteins are produced in rough endoplasmic reticulum, uh, all others, carbohydrates and lipids, are produced in smooth endoplasmic reticulum. After this synthesis, uh, those molecules, those um, proteins and carbohydrates and lipids are going to the transport vesicles, single membranous vesicles, which contain those secretory products. And what is the uh, following stage? 
Then he carries those secretary products in mature molecules to the following organelle. To the next organelle, it's Golgi apparatus or Golgi complex. And here, those transport vesicles are fused with membranes of Golgi complex. And uh, proteins and carbohydrates and lipids, they undergo final uh, stages of synthesis here. They undergo their final structure. And uh, they are going to be uh, ready to be released from the cell. So, Golgi apparatus, it provides final stages of synthesis of proteins and carbohydrates and, carbolip and uh, lipids. Also, uh, Golgi apparatus provides synthesis of compound molecules. Here, proteins, lipids and carbohydrates meet each other. When carbohydrate is attached to the protein, we receive uh, glycoprotein. When lipids are attached to the proteins, we receive uh, lipoproteins and also when lipids are attached to the carbohydrates we receive uh, glycolipids so uh, compound molecules are produced in the Golgi apparatus because uh, organic molecules from different sources meet each other here in the Golgi apparatus so final stages of synthesis of molecules organic molecules uh, take place in Golgi apparatus synthesis of compound molecules and also Golgi apparatus it provides distribution of secretory products and it forms uh, vesicles, transport vesicles and also lysosomes, peroxisomes and we'll look how they uh, are produced. So here we can see transport of proteins from half endoplasmic reticulum via transport vesicles which carry those proteins through the Golgi apparatus to Golgi body. And here those membranes are uh, fused and proteins they undergo their final structure in the Golgi apparatus. And uh, we can see that single membranous organelles, they form same system of single membranous organelles which are related to each other and they form, uh, they have same membranes which may be separated from one a uh, single membranous organelle and may be fused with another single membranous organelle. Uh, and uh, what is the structure of Golgi apparatus? It's formed by different sterna and transport vesicles. The sterna they form set. Here we can see set of the sterna, and this set is called dictyosome. And each cell may contain some sets of uh, uh, cisterna, so some dictyosomes are present in each cell and together all dictyosomes they form Golgi apparatus or Golgi complex uh, or Golgi body. Uh, and uh, here we can see cisterna and transport vesicles. Uh, some vesicles are fused with this cisterna and uh, this cisterna after some processing of uh, secretory products will form new uh, transport vesicle which will go to the following cisterna of Golgi apparatus. And it's uh, how different secretory products are carried in the Golgi apparatus. Uh, we have cis and trans phase of Golgi apparatus. Uh, cis is near the nucleus and trans is uh, near the outer surface of the cell. And um, after the processing of different substances in Golgi apparatus, some vesicles are separated from the stern of Golgi body. Some of them contain enzymes and those vesicles with enzymes are known as lysosomes and uh, some of them also are peroxisomes and we'll uh, talk about them later. And uh, also single membranous vesicles uh, which contain uh, secretory products which uh, are going to be released are called secretory vesicles. So Golgi apparatus forms secretory vesicles which uh, are needed for the secretion uh, by the cell and then they uh, release their content via exocytosis to outer environment and uh, it's uh, essential stage of the heterosynthesis when secretory product is released to outer environment and so secretory vesicles are produced in Golgi apparatus and then their membrane is fused with outer membrane of the cell and inner content is released uh, so, two types of vesicles are produced on Golgi apparatus, secretory vesicles or um, vesicles with enzymes which are lysosomes or sometimes they are peroxisomes. 
Uh, here we can see an uh, electron microphotograph of the quality apparatus, uh, the rust cisterna, and also vesicles, transport vesicles, which provide transport between the cisterna. And here we can see quality apparatus, cisterna, and vesicles, which are located near it. And also here we can find mitochondrium uh, and um, uh, granules, uh, which probably are liposomes. And also here we can see a uh, dictyosome set of cisterna of Golgi apparatus. And uh, here we can see plasma cell. This cell is specialized in the protein synthesis. Here we can see membranes of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, it's nucleus of this cell. And uh, this cell has special localization of Golgi apparatus near the nucleus. It's filled near the nucleus. And under the microscope, we can see, under light microscope, we can see light area near the nucleus, and we can recognize these cells by this feature. It's place where Golgi apparatus is present in this cell. And here we can see neurons. They have special staining. It's drawing of histological site and it's microphotograph. They have special staining, this osmium acid, and it reveals different membranes of Golgi apparatus. Uh, and uh, uh, here we can see that uh, uh, the staining reveals membranes of Golgi apparatus and uh, they are uh, stained in dark gray or dark brown color and it may be revealed. And uh, next organelles, single membranous organelles, are lysosomes which are formed on the Golgi apparatus. Here we can see lysosomes and they are single membranous organelles which contain enzymes. Here we can see enzymes inside the lysosome and single membrane uh, separates this lysosome. Uh, and here we can see electron microphotographs of the cell and those black drops inside the cell. Uh, they are lysosomes which contain different uh, enzymes. Here we can see lysosomes inside the cell and here we can see neighboring mitochondria inside the cell. So there are different kinds uh, of lysosomes and different stages of their development. Uh, here we can see lysosomes which contain inactive enzymes. Uh, they are have been separated from the uh, Golgi apparatus. And we call those uh, inactive lysosomes primary lysosomes. Uh, primary lysosome contain, uh, contains inactive enzymes and it's not involved in the cell digestion. Uh, it's newly produced lysosome. And uh, lysosomes, main function of lysosomes is uh, lysis, so it's uh, uh, cell digestion. And they should receive something uh, to provide digestion. For example, this cell is able for phagocytosis. For example, it's bacteria and it will be eaten by the cell. And here we can see phagocytosis, cell eaten, and uh, membranous vesicle is formed as a result of phagocytosis. It's membranous vesicle which contains, uh, which contains bacteria. It's called phagosome. It's phagosome, it's result of phagocytosis. We can uh, have uh, heterophagosomes, which, is, uh, which are a um, result of uh, uh, heterophagocytosis when a cell eats uh, another um, foreign particles. And also there is autophagocytosis and autophagosomes, which uh, contain different broken organelles of the cell. Uh, for example, during cell aging, different organelles may be broken and they are included in the uh, autophagosomes. So generally, phagosome, which is result of phagocytosis, it contains some particle which should be digested and uh, this uh, vesicle is uh, covered with single membrane. But uh, this vesicle doesn't contain uh, any enzymes and digestion in this case isn't possible. But enzymes are present in the primary lysosomes and they are inactive. So what will happen next? Next it's the formation of phagolysosome. Primary lysosome which contains enzymes goes to phagosome uh, and uh, they are fused and uh, enzymes are released in the phagosome 
and as a result of fusion of primary lysosome and phagosome, we uh, receive phagolysosome or secondary lysosome. Here we get phagolysosome or secondary lysosome. And in this lysosome, uh, enzymes are activated and they provide digestion of this particle, for example, bacteria or something else. And digestion takes place in the phagolysosomes. So, uh, lysosome or primary lysosome plus phagosome, we receive phagolysosome or secondary lysosome, which provides digestion of different um, uh, molecules. And here we can see result of digestion. Uh, this bacteria is broken. And uh, uh, after this digestion, we receive vesicles which contain different waste products. And uh, they are called residual bodies. Uh, here we can see residual body. And usually they release their content to outer environment. Sometimes they um, are present in the cell, um, but usually they release their content to outer environment uh, via uh, exocytoids. Via exocytoids. So there are stages of a uh, lysosomic cycle and kinds of lysosomes. Primary lysosome plus phagosome, they form phagolysosome, secondary lysosome, and after this digestion, we receive residual bodies. And here we can see phagocytes, cells which are specialized in phagocytosis, and there are bacteria. And how uh, here we can see how phagocytes, they uh, provide phagocytosis of bacteria, and this process is involved in the immune defense of our body. And also we have specific organelles uh, inside the cell, which are called peroxisomes. Here we can see lysosome and peroxisome. They both are single membranous organelles, they are vesicles, uh, which are covered with single membrane. And both contain enzymes. Lysosome contains enzymes, and peroxisome contains enzyme catalase. So some scientists and some textbooks they describe peroxisomes as a kind of lysosomes, but uh, some scientists uh, think that peroxisomes are distinct kind of uh, the cell organelles, and that's why in some textbooks peroxisomes are described as a distinct kind of organelles. So it's not a mistake, you can uh, describe proxisome as a kind of lysosome or as a distinct kind of organelles. So what uh, is specific for peroxisomes? They contain marker enzyme catalase which uh, provides reaction, uh, which provides breakdown of uh, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, which is a toxic metabolite. Uh, and uh, as a result, we receive uh, uh, water and uh, oxygen. It's a result of breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. And here we can see water and oxygen, they are toxic for the cell, and it's provided by catalase. So, main function of peroxisomes is detoxification um, of uh, hydrogen peroxide. And peroxisome, um, a specific feature of the structure of peroxisome is presence of crystalloid core inside uh, peroxisome. Here we can see it. And uh, it differs peroxisomes from lysosomes. Here we can see peroxisomes, uh, it's single membrane, and in conclusion, it's crystalloid core inside the peroxisome. It's a specific feature of this organ. Uh, and here again, the peroxisome, inclusion inside the peroxisome, uh, says us that it's peroxisome, not the lysosome. Here again, the lysosome and peroxisome with this inclusion. And now we are going to the double membranous organelles. We have discussed all single membranous organelles, and now we are going to mitochondria, which are double membranous organelles. Single membranous organelles, as you already know, they form uh, the same uh, single uh, system of single membranous organelles, and uh, membranes from one organelle may go to another organelle, and uh, they are formed as a result of separation from pre-existing organelles. But mitochondria are independent cell organelles, 
they have autonomic uh, features of their life cycle and they are autonomic uh, organelles uh, and uh, they develop as a result of division of pre-existing mitochondria. They aren't very related with uh, uh, single membranous organelles. It's first feature. Another feature uh, that uh, mitochondria, they have own DNA, mitochondrial DNA, and they have own ribosomes. So they have everything which is needed for their own protein synthesis. So own protein synthesis is going on in mitochondria, uh, and it provides autonomy of this organism. Mitochondria, they have uh, two membranes, outer membrane and inner membrane. Inner membrane forms uh, closed space, which is called matrix, uh, in, and it's filled with special fluid, it's matrix. And um, also there, there is intermembranal space, which is located between outer and inner membranes of mitochondria. Uh, and uh, there are uh, imaginations or processes of inner cell, of inner mitochondrial membrane, and they form crystal of mitochondria. And on those membranes, membrane of crystal, we have uh, it be, uh, ACE, uh, it's special uh, enzyme which provides ATP synthesis. Uh, so ATP synthesis production of energy takes place in mitochondria. And uh, let's look at some microphotographs of mitochondria. It's uh, outer and inner membranes of mitochondria. Inner membrane forms crystal, folds, um, and it's matrix of mitochondria. Here we can see mitochondria, and we can see that they have different shapes. They may be elongated, they may be round, or sometimes they are branched. Uh, and here we can see neighboring organelle, uh, it's rough endoplasmic reticulum. It's present here. Uh, also, we can see here uh, mitochondria, and uh, they are very numerous in this case. And here we can see how different uh, shape and structure they may have. Also, we can see here mitochondria, it's in electron microscopy, and also we can see they are crystal. And here we can see a division of mitochondria. They are independent organelles, they are autonomic organelles, and they are formed only as a result of division of pre-existing mitochondria. And now we are going to the non-membranous organelles. Uh, first, non-membranous organelles, which we have already discussed, there are ribosomes. And uh, we are going to the next uh, non-membranous organelles, which are called proteasomes. Probably uh, you don't know about proteasomes because they are uh, newly described uh, cell organelles and uh, the scientists uh, scientists which have uh, described uh, proteasomes, uh, they were uh, awarded with a Nobel Prize. So, what are the proteasomes? Proteasomes, they are non membranous organelles, they form tube like structures, they have uh, three subunits, two uh, peripheral and one central subunit, and they have canal inside. Proteasomes, they uh, provide breakdown of proteins, and this breakdown is very specific because proteasomes, they are specialized uh, protein killers, and uh, they are attached to the proteins, specific proteins which are marked with, with ubiquitin, and uh, those marked proteins, they are recognized by proteasomes. Uh, then they uh, uptake this uh, protein, a protein chain which goes inside the uh, canal inside the proteasome and proteasome cuts those protein into small pieces uh, which consist of a few amino acids and it's very specific process inside the cell. Uh, so there are two organelles which participate in the breakdown of proteins, lysosomes and proteasomes. Uh, there are two differences between them. Lysosomes are membranous organelles and proteasomes are non-membranous organelles, so they have different structure. And also, uh, uh, lysosomes are non-specific uh, organelles which provide a uh, breakdown of proteins. Uh, they can literally uh, eat and digest uh, everything, but uh, proteasomes um, they are very specific and they provide very specific breakdown of the 
proteins, so they are very specific killers, specialized killers of proteins. Uh, and uh, now we are going to the cytoskeleton. Uh, it's also a non-membranous organelle or complex of non-membranous organelles and structures in the cell. And cytoskeleton, it maintains the shape of the cell, it maintains different uh, intercellular structures, and it's made up of three components, so it includes three basic parts. Uh, we have uh, microfilaments, uh, which are made up of actin. We have intermediate filaments and microtubules, which are made up of tubulin. And uh, intermediate filaments, they are made up of different uh, substances, which differs, uh, differ in different uh, cells. For example, keratin uh, is, uh, forms uh, intermediate filaments in the epithelial cells. Uh, we maintain this mean in the uh, connective tissue or muscular cells. So different proteins, they form different intermediate filaments in different cells. Why do we call them intermediate filaments? Because they have intermediate diameter. Microfilaments or actin filaments, they have diameter from 5 to 8 nanometers. Microtubules, they, their diameter is 24-25 nanometers. And intermediate filaments, they have diameter 10 to 12 nanometers, which has intermediate between microfilaments and microtubules. What are their features? Uh, so, microfilaments, they are actin filaments. And actin filaments, they are contractive filaments, which provide contractions of the cells, and also they provide movement of different uh, organelles and parts of the cells inside the cell, and also they can move entire cells, so they may form, they may participate in the formation of pseudopodia and movement of entire cell. Um, intermediate filaments, they mainly are supportive uh, filaments, they form intercellular skeleton, they maintain the shape of the cell, and also they are involved in the formation of intercellular junctions. They are attached uh, to the desmosomes and hemidesmosomes inside the cell, and microfilaments also are involved in the formation of the cell junctions, they are attached to the adherent junctions. And uh, the biggest uh, components of cytoskeleton are microtubules. They are made up of uh, tubulin monomers, and uh, they form division spindle, which participates in the cell division. Also, they uh, in some cells provide transport function, and also they form. Uh, uh, they are involved in the formation of cilia and flagella. And uh, on the following uh, lessons uh, and lectures, we'll talk about structure of cilia and flagella. And also, they form uh, cell center, centrioles of the cell center, those microtubules. Uh, and here we can see cell center, it has two subunits, uh, two centrioles, and uh, those subunits are made up of microtubules. Here we can see triplets of microtubules nine triplets of microtubules. Each triplet consists of uh, three microtubules. So three, three, and three microtubules. And uh, there are nine triplets which form a uh, subunit of cell center. And two subunits, they have T-like localization, uh, and they are located uh, near the nucleus. Uh, and uh, subunits of cell center, they participate in the cell division. Um, because uh, microtubules of division spindle, they are attached on one side to the cell center, on another side they are attached to the chromatids of chromosomes. And here you can see appearance of cell center, two subunits, and here you can see two subunits of cell center and uh, numerous microtubules which are going, uh, uh, which are beginning from cell center and they are going to different sides uh, of the cell. Uh, so, we have discussed main uh, general organelles, principal general organelles. Uh, they are living parts of the cell, and also there are inclusions inside the cell, uh, which are non living parts of the cell, and they are not obligatory parts of the cells uh, and non permanent uh, parts of the cell. They are located in cytoplasm, and there are uh, different kinds of inclusions. Here you can see those inclusions. 
so they are non living components of this cell. For example, there are drops of fat may be present in this cell. And um, how to understand uh, that they are non living components of the cell and their difference with uh, the cell organelles. For example, um, there are people which uh, have uh, obesity, they have a lot of fat, uh, even uh, everyone has continuous fat. And those fat isn't organ. It's uh, analog of inclusion. We have organs which are living parts of our body, and also we have storage of fat under our skin. Uh, and uh, those fat isn't organ. It's inclusion. So drops of fat inside the cells they aren't uh, organelles. They are inclusions, non-living components of the cells. They are non-active uh, in the cell and non-permanent. They aren't obligatory parts of the cells. And there are such kinds of inclusions as secretory inclusions, which uh, are waiting for the release in the outer environment. Uh, they are present in the secretory cells. And secretory inclusions, they are formed in the Golgi apparatus. And they are different. They correspond to the type of the cell. Also, there are excretory inclusions, uh, which uh, contain different uh, waste products before they are released. For example, uh, different residual bodies, uh, which are a result of um, phagocytosis and cell digestion. Trophic uh, inclusions, glycogen and lipids, different nutrients which are uh, present in the cell. Uh, and pigment inclusions, different inclusions of melanin, uh, which are present mainly in the melanocytes in the pigment cells. And let's look at some um, examples. Here we can see uh, cells. Uh, this slide is called general morpho morphology of the cell, and it's stained with hematoxylin and eosin. And uh, the same cells are stained with different stains. Here we can see staining with carmine, which reveals inclusions of glycogen, glycogen inclusions of the cell, and those uh, pink or red granules are inclusions of glycogen, it's nutrient inside the uh, cells. And the same cells are stained with um, uh, osmium acid uh, or uh, sudan, and uh, those black uh, drops, there are drops of fat which were revealed with this stain. And we can see that uh, trophic inclusions are present in the cells, but we need special staining methods to reveal different kinds of the inclusions. Uh, here we can see uh, glycogen inclusions and uh, inclusions of uh, fat are present here, uh, which are revealed with, by special staining. And also we have in some cells pigment inclusions. We can see here melanocytes, um, pigment cells, uh, which um, uh, have uh, pigment inclusions. And uh, there are non-stained cells. And uh, we can see that they have all the color. But we need those inclusions in melanocytes to provi provide protection of our skin, of our organism uh, against ultraviolet uh, race. And here we can see microphotograph of those cells. And also there are uh, secretory inclusions. Here we can see secretory cells, panet cells, special cells of uh, intestines. Uh, it's example of those inclusions. And they have red granules. They are stained in red. There are uh, inactive enzymes uh, which will be released uh, in the lumen of the intestine. So there are uh, secretory inclusions in the cells. Uh, so, students, we have discussed structure of the cells. We have discussed uh, cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm, which is composed of cytosol, organelles, and inclusions. And now let's go to the cell cycle, how a cell is functioning during this life. And a uh, cell cycle includes in typical cells, it includes mitosis and interface period between the mitosis. Uh, and interface, uh, it's a uh, phase when cell isn't uh, undergoing division. Uh, and it uh, includes G1, S, and G2 periods. And also some cells, they have uh, GO or G0 period. Uh, so, uh, 
mitosis it's the process of division of the cell and between the mitosis we have interface uh, during interface we, uh, nucleus is uh, well visible in the cell uh, and here we can see this uh, nucleus uh, and nuclear envelope uh, is formed uh, so typical structure of the cell is present in the interface and there are uh, three periods of uh, interface G1, S and G2 period. Uh, during G1 period cell is growing and uh, during growth autosynthesis prevails and then cell actively functioning and uh, then heterosynthesis prevails, for example in secretory cells. Uh, it's G1 period, it's usually the longest period in the interface. Uh, after that, cell goes to S period of interface and it undergoes replication of DNA and uh, synthesis of uh, proteins of division spindle uh, takes place in the S period uh, and a cell is going to the mitosis. So, uh, main result of S period is replication of DNA. And during G2 period, cell uh, is uh, getting ready to the mitosis. And after the G2 period, mitosis begins. In some cases, cells excite from uh, typical cell cycles. They are going to the G0 period. Uh, they are in the resting state and they don't undergo mitotic divisions. Uh, some stem cells, usually stem cells, are, are in the G0 period and they can come back to the cell cycle. Uh, also, highly specialized uh, cells which have lost ability for the divisions, they also are in the cell cycle in G0, G0 period. Uh, some cells have lost ability for divisions forever, for example, neurons, and some highly specialized cells uh, then can uh, get back in the uh, cell cycle, for example, liver cells, and they may enter in the mitotic division. Uh, but usually there are highly specialized cells and uh, stem cells which are in the G0 period. And all other cells, they are in the mitotic cycle, they pass through mitosis, then they enter G1, S and G2 periods, and again enter in the mitosis, undergo next division. So after the interface, cells enter in the mitosis and there are four phases of mitosis. Uh, there are prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. First phase is prophase. During prophase, uh, nuclear membrane is broken and then it disappears and chromosomes are condensed and uh, from uh, homogeneous chromatin, uh, we can see that uh, chromosomes are condensed and we can see typical appearance of uh, chromosomes. It's visible in prophase and chromosomes they excite from the nucleus to the cytoplasm uh, and nuclear envelope disappears. It's prophase. Uh, after that, uh, chromosomes are going to the middle part of the uh, cytoplasm they form metaphasic plate and it's called metaphase and uh, tubules of division spindle are attached to each uh, chromosome, to the chromatids, uh, to their centromeres uh, and um, some units of cell center are going to the poles of the cell. It's metaphase and it's the best phase to study cardiotype, to study chromosomes uh, inside the cell. Uh, next phase, it's anaphase. Uh, chromatids, uh, they uh, are separated from each other and uh, they are moving to the poles of the cell. It's called anaphase. And uh, it's the shortest phase of the mitotic uh, cycle. And uh, the last phase, it's telophase. When two new nuclei are developed in the poles of the cells, the nuclear envelope appears and um, here we can see two new nuclei. Uh, it's karyokinesis division of the nucleus and then cell undergoes cytokinesis uh, division of cytoplasm. In some cases, uh, cells they don't undergo uh, division of cytoplasm and uh, we receive binuclear or multinuclear cells. 
uh, it's a result of incomplete cell division when uh, nuclei uh, were divided and cytoplasm wasn't divided. And uh, also in some cases, uh, cells they pass through a period of interphase but come back to the G1 period and um, uh, cell becomes to be a poly polyploid cell and it increases number of copies of DNA. Uh, those cells they have uh, two times more uh, chromosomes than usual cells. Why do we have this um, multinuclear cells or polyploid cells. Uh, in some cells, uh, they uh, need more copies of DNA for the active synthesis, for example, liver cells or another active uh, cells, and uh, it's needed for the active protein synthesis. And there are two ways to increase the um, number of copies of DNA or incomplete cell division with uh, formation of multinuclear cells or polyploid Poiploid cells when uh, reduplication of DNA isn't followed by the cell division and the nuclear division. And here we can see uh, different phases of uh, mitosis. Here we can see prophase, uh, it's metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And also there are cells in the interphase which aren't undergoing division at the moment. And here we can see also. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and also uh, there are some cells in the telophase, uh, which are finishing their cell division. Uh, so some cells pass through S period and enter in the mitosis. It's typical uh, cell cycle, but some cells they pass through S period and come back to G1 period. It's way to increase number of copies of DNA, but when cell enters in the G2 period, it always goes to the mitosis. Uh, and uh, we have discussed cell cycle, but also uh, there is uh, cell death. Uh, when cell uh, has finished its, its own life cycle. Uh, and there are two kinds of cell death, two ways of cell death. Uh, there are necrosis and apoptosis. Uh, of pathological and normal kinds of cell death. So what is the difference? Necrosis is pathological kind of cell death when cell is damaged and uh, it undergoes necrosis. It dies via necrosis. Uh, and uh, enzymes of lysosomes, they are released in the uh, cytoplasm and it's cell self-digestion of the cell. And another way of cell death is apoptosis, uh, when a uh, cell permits cell suicide. It's a normal kind of cell death because in some stages of our development, uh, we need apoptosis of some cells, some structures disappear, or old cells after some uh, cycles of cell division, they undergo apoptosis. Uh, during necrosis, cell is uh, digested by lysosomic enzymes, uh, and uh, Rest, uh, resting particles of the cell are called detrit or detrite, uh, and in apoptosis, a nucleus becomes to be very dense, uh, it loses nuclear pores, and all chromatin becomes to be heterochromatin, and nucleus is divided into small particles, and cytoplasm is divided into particles, and uh, we receive apoptotic bodies, particles of the cell, uh, which has permitted cell suicide. And those apoptotic bodies are eaten by the neighboring cells uh, and cell completely disappears. So it's normal kind of cell death which also takes place in our body. So here we can see appearance of apoptosis, apoptosis uh, when cell is divided into cell particles, apoptotic bodies. And uh, it's necrosis when cell is broken and it uh, undergoes cell self-digestion. It's necrosis. Uh, so we have discussed the principal parts of the cell. Cell has cell brain, it has nucleus, uh, organelles, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, different transport vesicles, uh, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and peroxisomes, secretory vesicles, mitochondria, uh, cell center, uh, cytoskeleton, and all those structures are present 
uh, in all cells. Uh, and uh, they are characteristic for all cells of our body, but also there are special uh, features of the cells, and we'll uh, talk about those special organelles and special features of different cells in the following topics when we'll study general and special histology. Uh, and we'll study the differences between different kinds of the cells and how it helps to provide them their functions. Uh, so, students, that's all, and thank you for your attention.